Welcome to part 5 in this series of tutorial videos for new members of the Goon Swarm Federation Alliance. This chapter will demonstrate the basics of fitting ships. Ship fitting is a complicated art and there is far more to it than can be displayed in a single video, so this is only to get you started. You will later need to learn the advanced techniques on your own. Designing ships is largely done out of game. I use the tool called Pyfa for this which is one of the tools you installed in the first video. Pytha allows you to design ships entirely out of game. Since the attributes of ships depend on your character's skills, it is important to import your characters into Pytha. To do this, go to Window and Character Editor. Here, let's create a new character. Here you can use an API key to import the skills of your character. Let's create a new API key. Let's name this API key Pytha. Check no expiry. And the only information that Pypha requires is character sheet. So let's submit and create this key. Now copy paste it into Pypha. And once you have pasted the API key and verification code into Pypha, hit the get characters button. Here you can select which character in the account you are working with and hit the fetch skills button. There you go. Pypha is now configured to use your character. To start, let's simply import an existing ship fit and analyze it in Pytha. Let's use the Cockleet Hawk. You can copy this EFT block into the clipboard. Then go to Pytha and simply edit from clipboard. This will import the fit. The first thing you should know about any ship is its special attributes. You can right click in Pytha and go to ship stats. This will show you what makes this ship special. What do we see here? There are a lot of bonuses to light missiles and rockets, so this will definitely have to be a light missile or rocket ship. And what do we see? Yes, it is a light missile ship, that's exactly it. Now the weapons for a DPS ship are the primary thing you care about, so you want to make sure they are always bonused. What else do we have here? We have a warp scrambler. This prevents other ships from warping away. Note that this is a warp scrambler, not a warp disruptor. This means that it shuts down micro warp drives and is a close range module. You can see the range listed here is 8.6 kilometers. You need to be fairly up close to them. Here we have a micro warp drive. Okay, makes your ship go fast. This is a shield extender. Gives you more shield. I will cover that in a minute. This is a stasis web. It slows down enemy ships. Again, this is a very short range thing, and this lists how much speed reduction it gives you. EM ward amplifier, I will cover later. This power core gives you more power grid. You can see your CPU and power grid at the top right corner. They are fairly maxed out. The modules on this ship use just about everything it has got. And if I toggle off the power core, which you can do by this first icon, you see that this ship is actually over budget in the power grid department. This is why it has a power core to enable you to fit all the other modules. The CPU and power grid are one of the main constraints when designing ship fits. You may want to put lots of fancy weapons and modules on a ship, but usually you will not have enough power grid and you will need to start making trade-offs. You sacrifice some tank in order to get speed, you sacrifice some DPS in order to fit more tank, things like that. This here is a damage control, I will come back to that. And these two rigs are also for defensive purposes. After the CPU and power grid area, what you see here is a resistances section. Now this tells you how much tank your ship has. Effective HP is the main indicator used. This ship is about 10,000, which is Fairly good for a small ship. Bigger ships, of course, can go much higher. And basic frigates, considerably lower. Every ship has three levels of hit points. The shield, the armor, and the structure. First, your shield is shut out, then your armor is shut out, and then your structure gets shut out. And they have different resistances, different damage types. So, for example, if you have a weapon that does kinetic damage, as you see here, the shield resists are quite high, but as you near structure, the resists go lower. So 
your ship will start taking more damage from kinetic weapons the lower its hit points already go. Whereas for example with explosive, the armor layer goes fast if you're taking explosive damage, but the shield and structure are roughly similar. On the right you see the total hit points for each layer. These combined make up the effective hit points. Every ship has some base hit points and you can extend these with for example the shield extender. If I toggle this off you will see shield hit points massively plummet and I turn it back on and it's back to normal. This module extends the base shield amount of this ship. The same goes for armor and there are even modules to increase structure hit points. In general every ship is designed to be strong in only one of these layers. For example you can obviously see that this is a shield ship as it has quite a lot more hit points in shield than in the other areas. You should not tank with multiple layers because that is inefficient and will not result in good ships. You always want to pick either shield or armor. Structure tanking is not usually done. It's only it has a few special purposes but mainly is just for comedy value. The fourth row here you can currently ignore. I will not cover what this does in this video. Under recharge rates you can see how much your ship can recharge its own layers of hit points. Many ships will only have the passive shield recharge. The shield slowly recharges over time, 41 hit points per second which is basically nothing. And none of the other layers recharge at all on this ship. This ship is not meant to repair damage. If it gets damaged, it either needs to be repaired by other specialized ships who repair ships, or it needs to dock up in station and repair in station. There are fits for ships that actively repair themselves. Again, this is a place where you want to make a choice. Do you want to have lots of hit points and not repair yourself, or do you want to have fewer hit points and repair yourself? You will generally not have enough module slots or CPU and power grid to do both at the same time, at least with any efficiency. The next section is firepower. This DPS calculation includes all the data from your character, so it changes with the character skills. For example, if we switch to my newbie character, you can see the DPS falls ridiculously low. And in fact, you can see all the other values lower as well, because they all depend on your skill points. The next section is capacitor. The main thing here is how long it lasts. With all modules turned on, this ship has about 8 minutes of capacitor. That should be fine to handle most fleet combat situations. If this gets very low, like under a few minutes, you may be dealing with a ship that will run out of power very quickly in a fight and just die. The main point of interest in the targeting and miscellaneous section is your speed. This calculation already takes into account whether the micro warp drive is active or not, and you can toggle the effect in the main area of the window. And the last section on the right is of course price. This gives you a good idea of what this ship would cost to buy. I will now walk you through creating a new ship fit. Let's make a slasher. To start off, let's see what's so special about the slasher. So it has projectile weapon bonuses. That's fairly straightforward. What you can also see right away is that its base speed is quite fast. As you recall with the previous ship that I showed you as an example, the base speed was 300 something and here it's 500. So let's think what we can make of this. We have projectile weapons and we have speed. Let's make a very fast ship that can just go round and round in circles around the other ship and shoot him and be so fast that the other ship can't really hit you. So this means we need tr guns that track reasonably well. This means auto cannons, and we need speed. We need lots of speed. We will also be very close range, so we want to be resistant to having our speed shut off. Now, micro warp drives can be shut off by warp scramblers, but afterburners cannot. Speed modules often go in the low slots, and we only have two. This may be a limitation, but let's see if we can deal with it. Let's start with the guns. So what I want are projectile turrets and autocannons are the short range good tracking ones and our ship uses small weapons. We have weapons of different sizes here. Basically the larger size means more damage, uh, longer range but also less tracking. So I'm going to go with something medium because I do want high damage 
but I also want to track well because we'll be going very fast around the other ship. We need to make sure we don't outrace the tracking of the guns. If you're going too fast, your guns will not hit him. What we want is that the target cannot hit us. So here are our options. 150 millimeters is the good size. You never want to use the most basic module, Autocannon 1. But all of these are valid contenders. The first choice to make is, do I want Tech 2 weapons or do I want to use meta weapons? Meta weapons are anything below the level of Tech 2. One potentially relevant difference is that Tech 2 weapons can use Tech 2 ammo. However, with projectile weapons, Tech 2 ammo is fairly useless if we are fighting at close range, so I don't care about Tech 2 ammo. Now, how do I pick the ideal weapon? I need some easy way to compare these. Of course, Pyfa gives us some basic information on the right. You can see they all take two power grid each and different amounts of CPU. But there are more differences to these weapons than just the amount of fitting resources they take. To view the exact differences, Evemon is the ideal tool. Open up any skill plan and access the item browser. Now the weapons I'm interested in are 150mm autocannons, so let's find them. What you can do in Evemon is simply select multiple items and it will automatically give you a nice comparison. Now we don't care about the most basic level 1 weapon. Let's select all the other 150mm autocannons. And as you can see in the middle on this grid, Evemon will highlight the differences. Usually green means good, red means bad, but sometimes Evemon mixes it up and doesn't quite figure it out correctly. What I usually do here is start filtering out things that look bad. For example, anything that's red. Light carbine repeating, you can hold down control and click on it and it will be removed. Alright, light gallium is now the worst, let's take this out as well. Light prototype is also pretty bad, apparently. And now we're left with two nearly identical weapons. Both of them have very good attributes and quite few differences. What really is the difference? One takes less CPU and it's the meta version. You can see the meta level here. Tech 2 are always level 5 and anything below level 5 is called a meta module. So in this case it's meta level 4. It looks like I can use meta 4 guns and save on CPU use and not actually suffer any other drawbacks other than not being able to use Tech 2 ammo. This is pretty good. Let's use this. Light Scout Autocannon. Now the next question is how many guns is it possible to fit on this ship? The first limit is of course the number of high slots. I have four high slots. But in the top right corner you also see the turret count. There are three hard points. This means I can fit three guns. So let's double click and add three guns. Alright, now I have guns. What were the other parts of this fit? It has to go fast. First thing you need to go fast is an afterburner. Because remember, micro warp drives, while much faster, can also be easily shut down, especially at close range, and this will be a close range ship. So let's look at the afterburners. I'm just going to put 1mn afterburner in the search, and this will show us all the relevant things. Now with afterburners, you have a naming scheme in use, which allows you to figure out what does what without actually having to compare them in Evemon. When you see Enduring, this means it uses less capacitor. When you see Compact, this means it uses less fitting resources, CPU and power grid. So you can use these as a basic guideline in case you are specifically targeting either for low fitting resources, for low capacitor use or something else. And generally when a module group uses such names, the Tech 2 version will be superior in most ways except for fitting requirements. For the sake of thoroughness, let's compare these in Evemon. Again, I will ignore the most basic afterburner compared to Tech 2. And it looks like Evemon uses old module names. It doesn't have the compact and enduring names. It has experimental and limited. What we really care about on this ship is speed. So what I want is obvious. I want the Tech 2 afterburner because it has the most speed by quite a few percentage points. On it goes. There we go. We are now at 1300 meters per second, which is quite reasonable, but we can do even better. 
there is a commonly used module called nanofiber internal structure that increases the ship agility and speed. So let's add one of those. Here you have only three variants. The most basic one, tech level one, some basic thing. It sounds very strange. Basic doesn't really ring like it's useful. So I'm just going to stick a tech two on it. There you see, we got another 100 meters per second out of this. Okay, now it's time to think about defense and tank. My effective hit points are very low. This ship will not last long if it gets hit. It may be okay to bank on just being impossible to hit, but sometimes you will still take some damage and it's best if you can resist at least a little damage. The first question is of course, do I tank shield or armor? With the slasher this is very easy to answer, because shield modules usually go in the medium slots and armor in the low slots. As you can see I don't really have many armor slots, I cannot do significant armor tanking, I have to tank for shield. The next question is, do I just want a big pile of shield in order to last long or do I want to actually repair my shield? I'm going to go with the repair option because the base shield is already so low that even if I add any shield it's not going to have much anyway. But if I repair shield it can extend the endurance of this ship significantly. To repair the shield you want a shield booster. As you can see in the list there are different sizes of shield boosters. Small is generally so weak that you will never want to use it, so let's go with medium. This is suitable for frigates. Now if you look in the list you also have remote shield boosters. These are for healing other ships. Ignore these. What we want are the ones that do not include the word remote. Aha, there we go. This is the tech level 1 option. This is the tech 2 variant. There appear to be a bunch of faction options as well. You can switch to the normal button to make sure those are filtered out. So what do we have? We have only the Tech 2 and Tech 1. Ah, but there is also Ancillary Shield Booster. This is very important. See what happens when I add the Shield Booster to the fit. Did you notice? The Capacitor. It only lasts 16 seconds. That is because Shield Boosters are extremely capacitor hungry. They will drain your electricity just about immediately on a frigate. So don't use the medium shield booster, instead we want ancillary shield booster. The difference is that the ancillary shield booster uses charges, it uses fuel. The cap boosters are used instead of your actual capacitor. When you use cap boosters always use the navy option, the normal ones are just bad. The size difference doesn't actually matter, we want the smallest ones because every cap booster heals the same amount of shield. And the smaller they are, the more of them we can take along. So let's go with Navy Cap Booster 50. It shows you that 9 are loaded into the module at the same time. The capacitor is not affected. And under recharge rates you can see that we are now capable of healing 67 hit points per second. This is not much, but remember this ship is designed not to get hit at all. So it should be enough to repair the damage from any random lucky shots. We do not survive with this ship if we are under sustained fire but some random shots every now and then should not be able to kill us. One module you almost always want on every ship is a damage control. Damage control increases the resistances of all three layers of hit points. It is the most important tank module you can usually have. Only very specialized ship fits do not use a damage control. So let's search for damage control. One thing you will learn is that not every module is named sensibly. There exist damage control modules that are actually not called damage control and therefore they do not show up in this list. This is really annoying. But what you can do is right click on a damage control and go to module market group. This will open all damage controls and you can see there are others in this list like interior force field array. It doesn't have the word damage control so it doesn't show up in searches but it actually is a damage control module. As always, different damage control modules have different... You can compare them in EVEMON as anything else. But just to keep things simple, I'm just going to use the Tech 2 option for now. Maybe we'll need to change it, but it has very good increase to resistances. The effective hit points rose by quite a lot. I will toggle it off and on so you can see again. Damage controls affect the structure most and armor and shield significantly less. Now notice something else. 
the recharge rate went up. This is because this calculation takes into effect incoming damage. Because the damage control raised our shield resistances, we will now take less shield damage and be able to resist more damage every second. If you increase your resistances, you decrease the amount of damage that's incoming, and this is calculated in here. If you look at the shield resists, remember this is a shield tanked ship, you notice that the first resistance, EM, is very low compared to the others. This is often the case with ships. They have some imbalanced resistances by default, and if you want to tank against all types of damage, which can be a good idea, then you'll need to balance it out yourself. There are various modules you can use for this, but what I am going to do is use a rig. So let's look at the shield rigs that are available. This is a frigate, so it uses small shield rigs. As you can see, there are various screen reinforcers. These increase the resistances of a particular damage type. What I am lacking here is EM, so I'm going to use an anti-EM screen reinforcer. Let's use the better one. It's more expensive, but eh, what the hell. Now you see my shield EM resist rose to 43%. That's quite good. This means the ship is now fairly evenly balanced in the field of resistances and does not have significant weak holes. Notice that the skill book icon went red. It says it requires the shield rigging skill at level 4 to use this rig. However, remember that the game lies about rigging skills. You don't actually need any rigging skills at all to use any rig. Alright, now that tank is taken care of, let's see what else we should do with this ship. There are still some empty slots we need to fill. You don't want to use ships with any empty slots unless you absolutely have to. One thing this ship cannot do is to hold an enemy ship in place. I have no warp disruptor. Let's fit one. Now this is a close range ship, so it needs to be close to the enemy anyway. So we might as well fit a warp scrambler, because this means we can also shut down the enemy's micro warp drive if he happens to be using one. Once again, they are all different. You can compare them in EVE mode. For now, I'm just going to take the Tech 2 option. Now I can hold down a ship, I can shoot it, and I can tank a little bit of damage. What else? Remember that this ship is designed not to get hit at all. One thing in its advantage is, of course, speed. But if possible, we want to disrupt the enemy's tracking. So even if they have guns that can track us at close range, we can disrupt them so that they are unable to hit us at all. The module to use for this is called the Tracking Disruptor. Again, different meta levels. I'm just going to go with the Tech 2 option. Aha, see what happens? The CPU is 21 points over. I need to do something about that. Let's take a look at the CPU requirements of these tracking disruptors. Tech 2 requires quite a lot, but here we have one that requires 16 fewer. That sounds nice. Let's use that one. Better, but still not great. Do I have any modules that I could downgrade to a more better fitting version? Well, I randomly picked this Warp Scrambler 2. Maybe one of the others is better. 36 versus, oh ho, much less. J5B only takes 27. Let's compare these in EVE Mon. So I want to take two and any others that are not the most basic one. Now initiated harmonic looks like the worst, I will filter that out. Fleeting progressive is now the worst, I will filter that out. And the rest are relatively even. J5B is the one that took the least fitting and is now the worst. What's better? Faint Epsilon is better, it has the maximum range, and still good fitting. And it's even cheaper to activate, which means less use of your capacitor. I'm going to go with Faint Epsilon. Now my CPU is almost maxed out, but I still have plenty of power grid. All my medium slots are full, but I still have some free rig slots and a free high slot. Let's see if we can fill these with something. Now my tank and speed are fairly well taken care of. So I think I will go with something to increase my damage in the rig slots. This ship uses small rigs, so small projectile weapon rigs it is. There are various rigs here. You can read about them in detail if you open their info page. But I'm not going to go through the details. I will just pick this and this. At the top right corner you can see your rig fitting uh, calibration. We have almost maxed it out, which is good, because these just barely fit. We still have a little bit of CPU and a little bit of power grid. Maybe we can fit something in this high slot. 
One thing we could fit into this high slot is an energy neutralizer. It sucks dry the enemy's capacitor and leaves him dead in the water, hopefully turning off his tank. This can be very useful in frigate fights, so let's find one. We want small because this is a tiny frigate. Let's open the market group so we see them all. Power grid looks good for all, but CPU? Oh no, we only have two left over. This is not super. So let's pick one of these low fitting cost ones just to try it out. We need to save five CPU somewhere in order to fit this. Now, do we still have any modules we could reasonably downgrade? Tech 2 modules are always good candidates for downgrades since some of the meta modules are very good. Afterburner is a candidate. However, remember that the Tech 2 Afterburner was quite a bit faster than the others, so I want all the speed I can have here. There is the nanofiber internal structure, but as you note, it doesn't actually take any fitting resources at all. There's the damage control. This takes a lot of CPU. Maybe we can reduce this somehow. So what takes less? Let's compare the damage controls in Evemon. Remember that we are about 6 over, so we want something that takes around 24 CPU. So let's get rid of the worst ones. As you can see, this is one case where Evemon shows the wrong colors. For damage control 2, it shows red, even though it actually has the best resistances. For structure, at least green is bad, but for armor and shield, it looks like green is good. That's confusing. Alright, F84 looks like it's bad for all three. Let's get rid of this. Interior is also bad for all three. Emergency is now the worst. F85 is the worst. And now Pseudo Electron is the worst. And Internal Force Field Array is what we have left. Alright, let's use that. As you can see, the differences are pretty small between Internal Force Field Array and the Tech 2 version. So that's not too big a deal. We can live with this. There we go, now everything fits. Oof, look at the price, 8 million. That's an expensive module. Exactly for this reason, because it has so much fewer fitting requirements, but delivers almost the same benefit as the Tech 2 version. All right, this ship is now in a good state. We have all the modules we need. Let's see what we can do about the DPS. Right now it shows zero, because I don't have ammunition loaded. You can select the guns, and then load some ammunition when you right click. I will not cover what different ammo types do in this video. Read the EVE University wiki for a thorough overview. They have very detailed statistics about different ammo types and what their effects are. I tend to use phased plasma a lot, so I will go with phased plasma as the default here. Ammo also has the basic type, which is bad and doesn't do much damage, and it has faction types. If you're using projectile ammo, then Republic Fleet is the standard one. All right, I have 93 DPS. That's pretty reasonable. In PyFi, you can also simulate overloading your weapons. To do this, select the weapons and right-click on the check mark. This overheats the weapons, and now I have 108 DPS. You can also overheat other modules, such as the afterburner, if you want to look at your overheated speed. Wow, that's fast. The afterburner burns out fast, so in real use, you don't overheat it. The shield booster for sure you want to overheat. See, we are now up to 111 hit points that we can resist per second. You can overheat your warp scrambler to catch the enemy from further away. This increased the range, as you can see. The tracking disruptor actually also uses scripts in it. These are basically like different modes. As you can see, it can disrupt both optimal range and tracking speed. We want to disrupt tracking speed. So now it's at 34% disruption. Let's overheat, and we get 41% disruption. Damage controls cannot be overheated, so no point doing anything there. All right, and now the ship is pretty much in its uh, finished state. I think this will make a very good 1v1 frigate PvP ship, at least if you are fighting something whose tracking you can successfully disrupt. Of course, tracking disruptors don't work on missiles, so missile ships will kill you, and anything that shoots from multiple angles, like a drone ship, will also kill you. What you can also do in PyFa is to set up a cargo manifest, just so you don't forget what you need to buy. Of course you want ammo. You can just drag and drop things here and set some quantity. A thousand of your preferred ammo type for every ship is a good default. Remember that you need 
all these other things you want to load in there as well. Cap booster 50. Always use the Navy cap boosters. Since 9 goes into every full module, we want at least 2 reloads, so it's a total of 27. And we want to make sure we put this script in the cargo, otherwise we may forget to buy it. And because we are overheating modules, they may be damaged. We may wish to repair them in space. For that, repair paste is the answer. I usually have 25 repair paste in every ship. And that's it. This is a finished fit and it should work rather well in game. Now let's see how we can easily get this fit into the game and buy this ship and do things with it. What you can do is go into edit and to clipboard. Just hit OK here. This will copy the fit into clipboard and you will easily be able to paste it in EVE. Now that the fit is in the clipboard, you can open your fit browser. And you see here is an import from clipboard button. Just hit it and your fit will be imported. You can save the fit here and it will go into your personal fittings. To easily buy a ship from the market based on some fittings, Go to the quick bar in the market and drag the fit into the quick bar. This will list all the things used for that fit, so you can easily go through them one by one and buy them all. This concludes the basic ship fitting tutorial video. For more detailed advice on what different modules do or how to fit your ship, feel free to ask in the Little Bees channel on Jabber.